All right, so what are we doing today? We are going to pull out our panicle hydrangeas. This is it, guys. I don't even know if it's bittersweet. Uh, sweet. I'm excited right now, actually. I'm excited to go plant them somewhere else now. Um, how are you feeling? Should I ask you after? Yeah, afterwards. <laughs> well, how are you feeling? I'm pretty excited. I think I think it's exciting because I know we're going to... It's kind of solidifying that we're moving. Yeah, it's making it more real. Yep. All right. Well, I'm ready. I'm excited. I don't think I slept last night. I'm just thinking about it, so I'm because I just want to get going with it. Yeah, I can feel it. I'm like all ready to go and just just move them out of here. All right, let me grab the shovel and go pull those out then. All right, so we're out here in the front. Angie's got the shovel there, getting ready to get these hydrangeas out. I want to show you guys real quick what we did um, yesterday. So that's after the pruning. That's what they look like right now. Those three big, huge hydrangeas that we absolutely loved having up here. So we're going to go ahead and get started digging. I'll talk a little bit about digging them because I'm not sure how big these roots have gotten. Um, and we're just going to, we're not going to wrap them in burlap or anything. We're just going to take them out, put them in a truck and transport them over to the next location, which is only a, maybe a half mile down the road. They did great here though, on the slope. Yep. So um, hydrangeas are really great for slopes. That is something that we were, immediately we found out about them. The next place we're going to, it's not going to be on a slope. It's just, it's flat. So um, I'm happy for that because the blooms won't be moving forward as they grow. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy about that. We'll also be doing what you said, turn them around? Yep. Flip them around Yeah, we're going to turn them around because they, you can see with the, uh, see real quick with the sun and the way they're on the slope here, they kind of curve out towards the sun. So we're going to flip them around when we plant them at the next location as well. Let's get going. So are you just like taking the job from me? Pretty much. <laughs> Gonna steal this whole job. Oh, it's fine with me. I don't want to be on that, on that slope. All right. So, what do you plan on planting here afterwards? Mm, we'll see. We'll see once this gets done. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, you want to explain to them what you're how how to um, because we're transplanting them, That's and like Ambrose said, the roots should already be a good you know. Yeah. These are, these have been in here for again three seasons already so i'm going at a 45 degree angle in around the hydrangea so i'm trying not to disturb too many of the of the roots here which i know it has plenty of roots my daffodils <laughs> well daffodils it's okay are kinda, they're done we're moving so <laughs> well at least the next neighbors will have yeah those bulbs are still going to be down there they'll, yeah. they'll they'll get to i think they've multiplied enough so that's a okay. good thing so i'm sorry i i kind of got you off topic. So you are going how far out? So I'm going, normally you want to go about as far out as a hydrangea is because we don't know how, the, how deep the roots are. But I'm only going about a foot out because we're gonna try to pull out as much as we can with as very little soil as possible. Because again, it's going into another home. We want to be able to... You don't want to hurt those roots, yeah, right? We don't, we don't want to hurt the roots at all. It's very difficult because we're on a slope here. And this is the best time to do this too. Um, when it's still, you know, early spring, late winter, early spring. Yep. When the plant is dormant. When, um, or right now they're starting to wake up, but there's no leaves on them. So that, it's still a great time right now. We're in early spring. Yep. Reason being is that if you wait when those temperatures start to rise, get hot the plant will really feel it and it'll go into shock. Yeah. And that's not that's not a good start for a for a hydrangea. You'll have you'll probably not even see mm -hmm. see it do anything. So we're hoping that it'll it'll bloom for them. It'll be happy once they get transplanted. I'm excited to see what that root is going to look like. I mean, well, that's one thing I did want to talk about. So, hydrant, panicle hydrangea roots are very fibrous mm -hmm. and they're shallow in it. So, yep. they shouldn't go too deep. And if you do cut some, it shouldn't be too bad. They should do just fine. 
We should have probably removed the drip. <laughs> we didn't remove it. Yeah. Pretty thick roots already. Oh, wow. Yep. Saw that biotone? Mm-hmm. Oh, my. All right, so last limelight hydrangea to get out of here. And God, I gotta say, this is just freaking difficult because this slope right here does not help at all. Now I've got this bush over here. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's a little bit difficult. These roots, um, you can definitely tell, and you can show you on that one over there. They're pretty thick already. They're growing. Let me try uh, to get up here without falling, guys. They were growing down towards the slope. Um, I don't think this is gonna, affect it because obviously when we re tra transplant these we're using biotone which is tremendously going to help Sorry about these that. and then we'll recommend to the uh, the new owners to water pretty heavily every other day um that way they get what they need and that biotone does its magic but last one here we'll get this one out and then we'll transplant them over to the next house hey come take a look i don't want to look why not <laughs> it looks weird it certainly does uh, holy moly guys yeah, completely empty. Ah. Well, it's getting real now, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Okay. All right, yeah, let's hop in the truck and go transplant these. Let's do it. We're driving cars on the Mars tonight. We're passing up to the stars tonight. So we have arrived and here they are. We're gonna bring them down. We have, all we're gonna need today is a biotone starter, the fertilizing starter. Um, and some of the bark mulch, right? Yeah. All right, so I've already dug the hole out a little bit more just to get this one to fit. Make sure my, uh, it's big enough. Yeah, so that's, that's good. Next thing I'm going to do is for the bottom here, just like Angie said, she's going to get some uh, pine bark mulch. We're not going to do too much, maybe about a two inch layer or so. And that's going to help with the drainage and retaining moisture as well. At the other house, we had a slope, so there was no worry about drainage. It was all going to flow down. Here is kind of flat, still on the slope but we wanted to maintain some moisture. And I'm just gonna drop a little bit of the soil in there, mix it up a little bit. And then what gets these hydrangeas really going and gets those roots restarted again is gonna be that biotone. All right, so with the biotone, not gonna measure it. Kinda used to doing this, but you'll get the directions on the bag. Just gonna pour a bit in there. Mix that around. And again, that biotone with the water is gonna react with these roots, gonna help absorb all the nutrients that it needs, all the water that it needs and get off to a great start. So we are gonna go ahead and leave them a little bit up high? Yes. So, the thing is because we don't know for sure how well the drainage is working here. The clay soil. We're gonna leave them a little bit higher so they don't sit in water. 
And, but that, again, that mulch in there is gonna help retain some of that moisture. And that's pretty much gonna do it right there. Now these hydrangeas, they were growing this way at our house because of the sun. I flipped them around so you can see all the stems are arching that way, but quickly they'll start coming over this way. This is a much flatter ground, so gravity's not gonna help it come down. So they'll do much better here. And hopefully we'll get some updates later in the season to see how they're doing. Then I'm just gonna backfill with the native soil and compact it the best that I can. So the wind's not pushing this guy front and back, left and right, whatever the case is. So here comes the big one. That's the one that grew the, bi the, the biggest one. So this one was the one closest to our door and the sun obviously hit it more. So you can tell it doesn't have as many curved um, stems. So it's a lot thicker, it's a lot bigger. The root system's way bigger because it got more sun. But I have to dig this hole here a bit bigger. And I Let think that's back. good. We're just gonna fill it with some, uh, some oats and native soil and some bottom. Hydrangeas have been planted and they're going to look amazing here. Summer blooms to the max, guys. So I am so excited because I think we're still gonna be able to take, to have that little time to come by and see them in the beginning of, of summer. That's when the blooms start to, you know, cut, uh, start to bloom. So I'm very excited to come by and see them here. I'm sure she'll be sending pictures. That way I can go ahead and see them because I'm very excited for them to have them. So now, how do we take care of them right after they have been planted? Well, first off, they gotta be mulch. We had a little bit of that, of the top of the root up. Reason, so it could be, you know, there could be better drainage, but <coughs> you need mulch. She's gonna go ahead and remulch. So I'm gonna leave it alone because we have mulch, but I don't, I'm gonna ask her again, but I don't know if she, she prefers another different type of mulch or color. So an another reason we're leaving like that real quick, <coughs> sorry, I'm coughing because we have all these, uh, uh, blooms and cotton flying all over the place. But yes. another reason we left it like that is because once these are planted, uh, we, those holes are gonna, once they get filled with water and you get watered a couple of times, they're gonna sink down a little bit. So we don't wanna put any mulch there yet. Uh, we have a lot of that native soil still back there that we can Plenty refill with it. once uh, they sink down just a bit and settle in. And then she can go ahead and remulch after that. Which that's gonna help a lot right there. Yep. Um, what else can we say? So we don't do anything to them. We do not fertilize when we just planted them. We have the Biotone um, fertilizer starter that's gonna help the roots. That's plenty till next season. She can go ahead and spring and give them a little bit of rose tone that, that will help the, the, the blooms, um, you know, for them to start off in, um, around that time. But you don't really have to either fertilize every single year. So a lot of times if you fertilize way too much, it just brings out a lot more leaf growth than flowers. Yep. So she can skip here and there, you know, um, the fertilizing in, in spring. Um, and then that's it, just watering. So this is gonna be the very important thing now. She has complete beautiful full sun right here, all day long. So that is wonderful for them. We live in a zone 7, 7B. In Virginia so that is perfect for hydrangeas they will not they, they can be out in the Sun all day long here in Virginia that's why we love Virginia so much so all she needs to do is keep them on a schedule um, water them I like to be an early bird so does she we um, water early in the morning um, so you know the stress of the heat doesn't get to them at all and they're not already sad and it's a little too late sometimes to water but early in the morning would be perfect or if you have any time that you can just keep them on a schedule every single day when it starts to heat up especially in summer um, for now she's probably gonna have to do um, if it stays hot like today because it's hot today um, she would have to be watering them every day um, if it rains here or it starts to cool off, she can go ahead and skip a day or two. But it's very important that they stay hydrated, that there's water in there uh, this whole year as, you know, they're gonna be getting established. Usually it's what, three, uh, the first three weeks that you water them really well. Yep. But you know, you wanna keep them well water this first year. And that's it, they're very easy to grow. Um, before you know it, 
there'll be beautiful blooms all through summer for her to enjoy and fall as well. And then I love to enjoy those dead blooms in winter as well. She'll be having that here as well. And she has some daylilies right here too. So um, I think she's deciding to move them a little forward, which I think she should too, because we have some daylilies, but these guys grow so big that they will end up covering them. And I have some that go ahead and bloom second, um, two times, you know, in the year, and they don't get to be shown in, in the uh, around fall time or summer time. All right, guys. So. That's it. We're going to go ahead and leave you here. And you have anything to say, Ambrose? Nope. Excited to see what happens here. Hopefully we have enough time to, I am. I to am. see I something. Th I think we'll, we'll be able to see something. So it's pretty exciting to be able to do that. We are very happy to be able to pass our the passion, our love that we have of plants to somebody else and for another family to enjoy. So we'll be heading back home. And then we'll talk to you all later on another video. And you all see what we get to plant in our home. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye, guys.